Hello, I'm Stefano Bianco. I am a member of the board of directors of Italian Week Ottawa, La Settimana Italiana di Ottawa. And we are here today to meet several members of the Italian community in Ottawa and talk about their involvement uh, with the Feast of St. Anthony in Ottawa. We are here today with Father Gino, parish priest of the St. Anthony Church in Ottawa. Father Gino, thank you so much for being here. What can you tell us about the origins of the Feast of St. Anthony? Well, the Feast of St. Anthony started when it was formed the parish. The parish was entitled to St. Anthony just because the founder was a Franciscan. Mm -hmm. And there is already a church of St. Francis. So they went to another saint and they proposed St. Anthony of Padua. And we know that it was a very good choice because Italian from every part of uh, a region, they like St. Anthony because it's the saint of uh, the miracles for the impossible things. He's always answering, answering to all our questions. So I think uh, it was a good choice. Nice, very interesting. And Father Gino, uh, can you tell us a bit how uh, the Feast of St. Anthony is celebrated here in Ottawa? The Feast of St. Anthony is um, one of the opportunity to gather all the people, all the Italian, doesn't matter from which place they are here in Ottawa, they gather here because here from these steps, from this uh, uh, front of the church, we have the mass. It is an external mass that it, it filled all the, the, this uh, Piazza Dante and therefore uh, it was a good opportunity to encounter ourselves and to feel that we are all Italian, so there is this kind of... Uh, but in actual fact, there are many not Italian, they are just coming here, especially a group of Irish people at the, in, the, in the past, but now many Asian are coming. And so this feast, it's always crowded all the same. Whether they are Italian or not, it's always somebody that is here. Interesting. And can you tell us a bit more about the typical ritual of the procession? The procession, well, the procession it is just a religious thing. It's mostly the Catholic Church has kept the procession to just to distinguish from the rally that is a little bit lay uh, for, for lay people. But the, when we talk about religious uh, uh, religiosity, well, we say the procession is spiritual. It is just to bring the power, the love, the, the the help of the saints or of the Blessed Virgin among our people. And the, the procession has the, the task of bringing the saint and the protection from house to house. And so it is something that has been always um, accepted, prepared, and accomplished uh, with great effort. Unfortunately, now we are in this year, it's really something... Um, well, hopefully we'll come back stronger well, next year. I suppose uh, so, in fact. So can you tell us about a bit more about like bringing the statue of the saint outside the church and then carrying it around Little Italy, basically? Yes, practically we make a, a little tour around the, this... Uh, it, will, uh, it will be more or less two years... Mm -hmm. Sorry, two hours... Okay. Uh, long so it is um, the the statue is carried with a cart and is going along our roads here and um, it is a big thing because at first there were the people of the uh, the children the good the first communion that they were just uh, going on then there was all those uh, that were uh, had a certain um, closeness with the church and finally there were the authorities Normally, also the mayor uh, is always coming and uh, firefighting band that was here and many other. And so we are going to these roads and with some station, I mean, where people could um, make an offering. So they prepare a table along the way and uh, they make the offering just for uh, the priest and just to come to pay all the expenses that... Uh, Certain organizations. That's really nice to hear that you have the full support of your community, not just Italians, but also like yes, any really everyone. anyone. Yes, because Saint Anthony is a saint uh, that is venerated 
by all peoples, I mean, from all nations. It's enough to be Christian, while it is St. Anthony's the most um, prayed saint after St. Joseph. Having lived in Padua for 10 years of my life, uh, I saw that you here in Ottawa recreated the true authentic spirit of the St. Anthony's procession. So I'm really glad to hear that and I'm looking forward to next year when we'll be able to do so again. Yes, uh, and with, with the choir, with uh, all the, the, the uh, things that make uh, something beautiful Just and memorable. Yes, it, it, is, um, it is the cooperation of all the peoples with their talents uh, that they are just gathering together in order to be able uh, to give a, a good image of St. Anthony's, of the church, and all those who believe, because at the end it is a religious uh, action that we are doing. We are here now with Carla and Sua Rosetta to tell you a very interesting story. Back in the days, almost 60 years ago, a group of nuns immigrated to Canada from Italy and moved, uh, after a few years, to this house here. The Sisters of the Dolorata, Servants of Mary. Carla, what can you tell us about the history of the Sisters and their involvement with the Italian community here in Ottawa? So I'm, I'm, I'm very honored to have been chosen to speak on the Sisters of the uh, Adolorata who have contributed so much to our community over the years. You know, um, back in the 50s and 60s is when the, um, uh, the second wave of Italian immigrants arrived in Ottawa. And um, uh, the church, of course, was the only Italian church at the time. And our uh, Italian uh, community at the time, of course, just um, uh, couldn't wait to get to church on Sunday, and we were. Vi it was a very busy, busy time for the the priests who were uh, uh, at the service of the parishioners. We um, in 1961, the parishioners were so happy to hear that we uh, would be hosting. Uh, six nuns from um, Nocera in, uh, from I uh, Italy who would come here and provide service to our community. So uh, there they were, six little nuns from, uh, from Italy arriving here. We, uh, the community, the Italian community, welcomed them with open arms. Initially, they lived on Louisa Street and uh, uh, then moved to Gilmore and eventually uh, found their home here at, in this beautiful convent behind us. And uh, during that time, they worked very, very closely with the fathers at the church to uh, try to, um, to create a, um, a good environment for the Italo-Canadians that were here. Um, they began this beautiful little um, uh, uh, club. I, I, it wasn't. A, it was a little um, group of uh, young girls called uh, I Piccoli Servi di Maria, who met on a weekly basis, and uh, there uh, the girls would gather, and the sisters would teach them Italian, teach them how to embroider. Please don't talk about my embroidery when, you, uh, when it's your turn to talk, because I, I don't think they were very successful with me. <laughs> but um, uh, they did a lot to maintain the culture and traditions of the, uh, uh, you know, Italo-Canadians at that time. Um, their dream was to start a daycare. And I have to say that they, um, uh, just before our interview today, we went in and took a... Um, uh, a, a, a tour of the uh, of the uh, daycare that they founded themselves, and it is second to none. It is so well organized, well kept, and this has always been their uh, dream. In the daycare, which started first to serve the Italian Canadians, um, now is a uh, uh, there's uh, children of all ethnic backgrounds, creeds, and they're all welcomed. 
And I think what is so powerful is that the sisters have been able to really um, uh, foster um, an environment of diversity. And the children are so well socialized. They socialize so well. It's, it's a beautiful thing to see. Thank you, Carla, for sharing with us such a, an amazing story. Uh, so, Rosetta, what can you tell us about your most memorable moments with the Italian community here in Ottawa? No, for the Italian community, we were very close with them, for Italian people, even now. The Italian for me. We are Italian anyway. I came very young just to do the last vote. They send me here. They send me here. I don't come because I want to come. They obligated to come for the mission, they said, to help the Italian people they need for the children. And they send me here. That's amazing. Even my father, the one that came here, called the superior in that time and said, Mother, don't send my, my daughter so far like that. And then I don't see him no more. Because after the five years he died. So Rosetta, can you tell us about the sisters' involvement uh, with the feast of St. Anthony and the church? And the church, we came in, uh, for the church, really, for uh, the priest, they, the, the, the fathers, they call us to come here to help for the Italian. We were very involved that time. No, not too much because busy of here. Too much busy of here. <laughs> now only me and the sister Mira. Before we were six of us. Now, so much sweeter. And some back in Italy. Only me and the sister Mira here. And we have the teachers. We have six teachers here. And uh, I don't do nothing no more. I am 86 years old. Just I help to check in the kitchen what she had to do, what she do. <laughs> I go and check, and they are here. She said, me, said well, let's see, abuse you. <laughs> because I do too much. You're a good supervisor. You're a good supervisor. No, we but I help. I help. <laughs> they say, don't let she abuse you. No abuse, but I am not one who don't stay and watch. I have to do it. I born in the war. <laughs> I born in the war. I am a war. <laughs> so, Rosetta, what do the sisters do during the typical Saint Anthony's procession? Saint Anthony's, we came for them, for them, for them, and for uh, the Italian people, because they had the seminary there. The the young boys to be a priest. And they have a student there. We help them. We, I cook for five years there with another one, because one was good. Sister Liane, she was very good to cook. I did not, because I was only for Lord Ricame. Uh, and the teacher, the girls had to do the filet. Uh -huh. I had to teach them in Italy for a lot. But here I had to help there in the kitchen. With that and the laundry. What's the sister Concettina, 46, 46 years old? I go and the her too. Because I am the one. <laughs> <laughs> well, Can I stay? I have to help. Even the kitchen now, I go to help. I don't supposed to do it. My niece say, I pay them. I don't pay you. Why do? I can watch. I have to do too. <laughs> We are now on Preston Street in the heart of Little Italy with Luciano Pradal. Luciano, thank you so much uh, for being here. Can you tell us about the importance of Cafe Italia for the Italian community in Ottawa? It's very important. It's very important because what happened is in every Italian community around the world, there is a Cafe Italia. Mm -hmm. There is so one. True. And what happened is they go there for a copy for a pool game or whatever. And in this uh, Cafe Italia especially, when somebody was hungry, they were ready to prepare something to eat. 
un panino, una pasta asciutta, Sandy Light. Yeah, it's TV, yeah. Perfect. Uh, Luciano, uh, can you tell us about uh, how Cafe Italia in the new location uh, is important for the procession uh, during the St. Anthony's Feast? Well, uh, uh, first of all, the Trattoria Cafe Italia was born basically beside the Cafe Italia. And Trattoria means a family run restaurant. So they were there, they were very, very successful. The food was simply, it was simple and good. And then, you know, things change. So they move here, Trattoria Cafe Italia, that is still owned by the same family, Dominic Carossa, Pat, and, and uh, Concetta, okay? And naturally, when the, the procession passed by, mm -hmm. they made, they built a little altar in the middle of the street. Okay. Not, nothing fancy, nothing wrong. They put up a, a statue of something, uh, of St. Anthony, with flowers and everything else. So the procession stopped. They say a prayer or something. And then the altar is moved and they go on. So people used to gather here uh, to watch the procession go by and, uh, and, and participate actively in the, in the procession. Absolutely, absolutely. They, they were stopping, they were coming out. Actually, the side was, was, com it was completely, it's completely full every time. There is a lot of story that we should share and uh, a more fantastic, beautiful story. And let's hope to meet again and again and again and again, okay? Ciao. <laughs>
So we take care of all that aspect for the church, for the feast. And that usually starts on a Friday evening, mm -hmm. goes into Saturday and into Sunday. So it takes a lot of effort on the, on the part of the nights to get that started. And that's, that event usually kicks off the Italian okay. week. How, how many people do you usually serve during the Italian week? Oh, you know, it, it, it can vary from year to year. Okay. Uh, I wasn't around at the inception, but many, many years ago, there used to be a lot more people, mm -hmm. a lot more, you know, the, the, the community is changing. There were a lot more active Italians mm -hmm. in the community and the parish. So in those days, it was a lot more fuller. Uh, these days, obviously, in the pandemic times, mm -hmm. we, we don't have any. But before pandemic, you know, we'd have hundreds and hundreds, yes, obviously, going through uh, over the three days. We are here now with Trina Costantini Powell, who has been the president of Ladies' Aid for 14 years. Trina, thank you so much for your time. What can you tell us about Ladies' Aid's involvement in the Italian community? In the Italian community, the Ladies' Aid um, came into being in 1948, and um, they were disbanded in 2019. So for 70 years, they helped uh, the community, and especially St. Anthony's Church, um, helping the, the clergy, um, paying off the, the church hall uh, by holding bingos and card parties and bake sales. Uh, but for St. Anthony's Day weekend, one of the most special events was the Ladies' Aid would host a pasta meal in the basement of the church. And um, we would serve probably close to 500 people. And it was, um, it was truly a community event. We would work alongside the Knights of Columbus and it was something that um, all my membership um, looked so forward to. And we would have many generations of members uh, working. And it was just a very special time, for sure. Trina, can you tell us something about your pin? So this pin dates back to the early 1950s. And uh, each member of the Ladies' Aid at that time, I wasn't born then, but each member um, received this with the... Um, uh, with the ribbon attached, and it, it's an old picture of St. Anthony. We had new pins made probably in, oh, I'd say about 2010, mm -hmm. but many members wanted to continue to wear this one because it, it harkened back to another time, to a time when the Ladies' Aid uh, first came into being, and, and it's very, very special. So I would always wear it, and that's why I thought it was special to wear today. Thank you. We know for sure the symbols are very important in the Italian tradition. Very much so, very much so.